Okay. Uh, all right. So today we are going to uh, uh, finish up uh, our discussion of the median, uh, the median algorithm, and then we will talk about the maximum subarray problem. So the median, the algorithm that we discussed last time for the median, the idea is you start with this array, you partition it like quicksort. When you partition it using the quicksort type of partitioning, uh, there will be, a, you know, the pivot will end up somewhere in this array. So it could be here, here, anywhere. It's not necessarily in the middle. So the pivot will end, end up here. Now, in general, we're not necessarily looking for the median. We will be looking for the ith element. So we'll be looking for the element whose order is i. So i could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when i equals uh, the floor of n plus 1 by 2, like, uh, you know, if the, if the size, for example, if, uh, if n equals 8, then 8 plus 1 over 2, that's uh, 4. So this will give the higher median, uh, and the lower median is going to be 4 minus 1. But generally speaking, the algorithm can, will allow you to select the ith element, even if you are interested in the second element, or in element number uh, that ranks 1 million, for example. Okay. So now if we are looking for the ith element, and i is here, this is the i that we are looking for, then what does this tell us? Yeah, it tells us the idea is that we can we only need to process the left hand side. And then if we get a, a pivot here, the partitioning ends up putting the pivot here. This will tell us that we will now need to process the right hand side and so forth. Now when does this end? There are two possible ends of this algorithm. So what's the first possible end? What's the first possible end? How, how will it end? Yes? Find the i. How will it find i? Because you know, either uh, you're looking on the uh, right side of the array or... Okay, so how will it end? How will the algorithm end? If p equals... If p equals... i. Okay, so if i happens to be, if the pivot uh, happens to be in position i. So if at some point here, p happens to be at position i. Because we know that the pivot is always in place. Okay? So if at some point p happens to be in position i, say i is position number 7. So if p uh, ends up at position 7, then we know that we are done. This is our median. Or this is, sorry, this is the i the i element that we are looking for. Now what's the other possible end? What's the natural end of a divide and conquer algorithm? Huh? What's the natural end? Yes? Just one element left in the... Yeah, there is only one element left in the array. So we will end if <coughs> the size is... the size is 1, or the ith element or the pivot happens to be at position i, the position that we are looking for. Okay? So this is the algorithm. In fact, last time we showed an actual numerical example. So now we will not give another numerical example, but we will write the code for this. And the code for this is going to be similar to quicksort. So this is going to be select in general of A, P, R, and I. So select of I, find the element or return the element that ranks I in this array, whose rank or whose order in the array is I. So find the element whose order is I. Okay, 
And as we said, the natural base case is size 1. So if P equals R, we return what? So this is find and return. So this is a function that returns an integer. What should it return in this case? If P equals R, what else could it return? A of P. Return A of P. It's, there's only one element in the array. So this is your array. This is P and R. P equals R. So you only have one element, so just return it. A of P. Now if the size is greater than 1, we divide it into 2. Same way, Q is equal to, how did we divide in quick sort? Hmm? P plus R divided by 2. No, that was merge sort. How did we divide in quick sort? So we call the partitioning routine. We call the partitioning routine A, P, Q, uh, sorry, A, P, and R. And then it will partition the array and it will return Q. What will Q be? What will Q represent in, in quick sort? Hmm? The index of the pivot. Okay, so it's the index of the pivot. Q is the index of the pivot. Okay, and then what should we do? Okay, it's called this. Okay, so here is Q. <coughs> And Q minus 1, Q plus 1. So what should we do? We'll have to check the condition if Q is greater than or less than the median. Yeah, exactly. So we have to check if, if the I that we are looking for is smaller or greater than Q. So we have Q. We have to compare I with Q. If I is smaller than Q, then where do we go? We go left. If I is greater than Q, we go right. So if i is less than q then oh i is less than q we go left go left means select p of p a p q minus, q minus one and I. I we pass the same i so this should return it's a, it's a function that let me rewrite it return select of a p r i else return select so what did I miss here I missed something q plus 1 r and i what did I miss should be q minus 1 in the first rotation hmm? Q minus I should be there in the first place. Q minus I? Why Q minus I? No, we are always looking for I. Why is it Q minus I? Because I is a global... Uh, here in, in this code, I is just a global number within the big array. So I is just the, an order in the big array and Q. So I and Q... I and Q are global indices in the original array. Okay. So what, what did I miss? I missed something important. Okay, so I'm checking if i is less than q. I do this, else I do this. So what happens if i equals q? What should happen? If i equals q, if i equals q, then q is the pivot. The index at q is the pivot. So what I should do is, if i equals q, then I return what? A of q or A of i. It's going to be the same thing. Now, if i is less than q, 
I return, I go left if I greater than Q because the else now will be I greater than Q. I go right. Okay, so this is the this is the algorithm. Now the analysis. Now any question on the any question on this algorithm? So it's just like quicksort, but we don't process both parts. We only process one part. So we should get a running time that is smaller than quicksorts. So now there is a best case and a worst case here, and a good case and a bad case. So what's the best case? Let's try to think about the best case. What's the best that we can hope for here? What's the most optimistic scenario? Yeah, get the pivot. Yeah, at which I? So which pivot? I get the pivot, so this is not, I get the pivot at I. There are tons of pivots in the algorithm. The first time we calculate. The first pivot, yeah. So the best case is when the first pivot is at I. Okay, so best case is first pivot is at I. Now what's the running time? What's the running time in this case? Yeah, you have to partition. It's not just a constant. In order to get where the pivot is, you have to partition it. And partitioning is scanning this array. So you have to scan it. So you can't avoid partitioning. You can never solve it without doing a partitioning. So you'll have to do at least one partitioning. And then to find the place of the first pivot. The luckiest you can get is when the very first pivot for the very first partitioning you do ends up being at position i. You can't get any luckier than this. So this is the luckiest case. So in this case, the running time is theta of n for the one partitioning. Now, what's the worst case? Hmm? Let's go through everything. Well, the worst case, in fact, is not going to be any different from the worst case for quicksort. Yeah. Because if, if, you, if we assume that in, in theory we get the same uh, <coughs> unbalanced partitioning that we can, in theory, get in quicksort, but we said that the practical probability is extremely low practically zero. If we get this. Well, it's just n factorial. Yeah, so then this is the first partitioning. And if we are, then the, the, the ith element is going to be somewhere here. So we only eliminated, in fact, we eliminated the pivot. All what we do is eliminating the pivot. So this is the worst case. We eliminate the pivot. We eliminate the pivot. And we keep getting unlucky at all levels. If we keep getting unlucky at all levels, and every time we pick a pivot that is the largest element in the array, every time we pick a pivot at random, random, and we are so unlucky that that pivot happens to be the largest element in the array, we said that the probability is uh, practically very low, but in theory this is possible, and this is the theoretical worst case. So worst case, same as quicksorts. Worst case. And we get the running time of theta of n squared. Now these two cases are not very interesting. The interesting case is when you get some <coughs> balanced partitioning. You know, just like quicksort, uh, a good case, not the best case, but the, the, the case that you expect to get or you hope to get is to get a balanced partitioning at each level. You know, each time you divide it in half. Okay, so this is a, a good case. It's not the best, but it's a good case. And if you get that, let's analyze that. Let's analyze the balanced partitioning case. Perfectly balanced partitioning 
at all levels. So in this case, we will get this. Pivot, then you divide it in half, and you work on one of them. So then you get a pivot, uh, sorry. At this level, again, you get lucky, and your pivot is in the middle. So maybe you get this, and then you get another pivot, and you get lucky, and it's in the middle, and you get this, and so forth. Balanced, perfectly balanced partitioning at all levels. So now the question is, let's write the recurrence for this case. What will the recurrence for this case look like? Recurrence for uh, perfectly balanced partitioning. Perfectly balanced partitioning. PBP stands for perfectly balanced partitioning. What's the recurrence? What, what will the recurrence look like? T of n equals to how many branches do we have? One, because we work either on the left or on the right. So this is a key idea. And what's the size of that one? Yeah. N by 2. So there is only one T of N over 2. Because there is only one branch because we eliminate a half and work on another half. So it's just like binary search. You work only on one half. And the size of that half is T of N over 2. Now, unlike binary search, what's the divide time? What's the divide time? How much computation does it cost you to divide the array at each level? Mm -hmm. N, because you call the partitioning. partitioning. So you call partition, this, this is going to cost you theta of N. So this thing, this is the divide time and this is theta of N. And one of these is T of N over 2. But you will call one of them, not both of them. So your... Uh, your recurrence is going to be T of N plus Cn. Now, how do we solve this? Can we use the master theorem for this? Yes. Yes, yes this is good for the master theorem. So, master theorem. What's the number of leaves? N log A base B equals N log... What's A? A is 1 and B is 2. So n log 1 base 2, n power 0, that's 1. And we compare the 1 with? With Cn. We compare 1 with Cn. So which one is greater? Cn is greater. Cn is polynomially larger. So which case is this? Case? Case 3. So in case 3, we need to check the regularity condition. Regularity condition. It's very, it's trivial here. A f of n over b less than or equal k f of n. What's f of n in this case? What's f of n? C n. So f of n is cn. In fact, if you do it, if you do n, it's not going to make a difference. This is f of n. So if you do it n, if you ignore the c, it's not going to make a difference. So, so let's ignore the c. So in this case, a f of n over b is going to be what? A is 1. So it's n over 2. Less than or equal k n. And this is this is true if k equals one half. True if n equals a half. So this implies t of n equals what? What's t of n? What will t of n be in this case? It would be f of n, which is theta of n. Okay, so do you know how to solve this using the recursion tree? So what will the recursion tree for this look like? So now I'm assuming that everyone is a recursion tree expert. 
Okay. So, using the recursion tree, what do we have at level zero? C N. C N. How many branches? One. one branch. This makes it easy. So just one branch. Level one. What do we have at level one? C N by two. Level two, we have C N by four and so forth. Now, this is level, last level is going to be level H minus 1, and level H is the base. Level H is the base. So, let me do it here. Oh, no, I shouldn't have erased the recurrence. Okay, so now, and... OK. So now the, the base cost is obviously what? So the, let's do the height. H equals what? Log n base B. What's B here? 2. Log n base 2. What's the number of leaves? It's clearly 1. Number of leaves is clearly 1, because we have one branch. So it's going to be number of leaves is going to be uh, 1 power h, which is 1. So the base cost equals a constant. Base cost equals constant. Now the internal cost, or let's, before we do the internal cost, let's do the cost at level i. What's the cost at level i? This is the key idea. What's the cost at level i? The key, the key idea is how to relate the, the cost at a given level with the level number. What's that? So at level 0, it's Cn. This is Cn divided by 2, Cn divided by 4. So what's the formula? Cn divided by 2 power i. So at this level, it's going to be Cn, Cn 2 power 1. OK. So then the internal cost, the internal cost equals, we can take C out, C, or we can take C and N out, and we have sigma I equals 0 to uh, H minus 1. Sigma of what? So it's half power I. So the base of the ge geometric series is half. Okay. Okay. So it's half power i. And then the summation is cn and then half power what? Power h which is log n base 2 minus 1 divided by 1 half minus 1. It's a geometric series. Then we have this uh, minus half. So this is 2cn multiplied by 1 minus <coughs> 1 divided by 2 power log n base 2. And this is equal to what? 2 so Cn, <coughs> 1 minus 1 over. <coughs> What's 2 power log n base 2? So I this is n. This is n log 2 base 2. So this is 2 Cn, 1 minus 1 over n, which means 2cn, 2cn uh, minus, 2cn uh, minus 2c. Okay. <coughs> and this is theta of <coughs> theta of n, which agrees with the master theorem. Yes. 
When we use the master theorem or recursion tree, are we always, is the answer always theta of n and not o of n? This is, a, this is like a precise bound. Yeah, because this is, these are precise calculations. So we are computing an exact formula. So this is theta of n. Yes, the master theorem give, gives you theta of n. If the case falls under one of the cases covered by the master theorem, it will give you a theta. And this analysis is a precise analysis. We did not make any approximations. We computed an exact formula. So this is theta. This is a theta accuracy analysis. Yes? Uh, you used uh, this formula r is 2n minus 1 upon r minus 1, right? For geometric series? So the geometric series is? It should be uh, 1 minus r is 2n upon 1 minus r, I guess. No, no, no. Uh, the geometric series sigma x i equals 0 to m. That's x power m plus 1 minus 1 divided by x minus 1. What? Actually, for fractions less than 1, it's x 1 minus x. No, well, you are talking about that formula for fractions when, when they tend to infinity. So you are talking about an infinite series with a, with a fractional base. So this is not an infinite series. This is a finite geometric series. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is finite. This is not an infinite series. Okay, any questions? Okay, so this is our analysis of uh, the median algorithm. This means that we expect this median algorithm to run in what time in most cases? What's the running time that we expect in most cases? Theta of n. Theta of n. So it's going to run, it's a linear time algorithm in most cases. There is still in theory that quadratic Worst case, but it's, uh, it's extremely unlikely, just like quicksort's uh, worst case. Okay. All right. Questions before we move to the next topic? 